Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at, this is uh, CC3. So this is CPM course three, uh, and specifically looking at our closure exercises, our closure section. And this one is 3-124. And I want to solve this equation for X and record our steps as uh, to show our work here. So I'm gonna rewrite the equation so we see it clearly. 6 minus x minus 3 is equal to 4x minus 12, right? So I want to solve for x. I want to keep this all the way down to where I have my x alone. And I'm able to isolate my x and find out what x is, right? This is just, remember, keep in mind, just to kind of give a little bit of context here. This is an equation, and an equation is just simply a balanced um, statement. Right. I want I want to find out what number does goes into that X. What number could I replace for that X and that X? It's got to be the same number. They're both this. They're both the same variable. Right. What's one number that when I put in here, I go six minus that number minus three is going to equal to four times that same number minus 12. Right. What number could go in there that makes this statement true? That's all this is. Right. So, I mean, I could play the guess and check game and keep added putting in numbers until I finally get a, an answer. That's definitely something I could say. Let's try Let's try zero. Does zero work? Let's try two. Does two work? Let's try three. Does three work? And just keep trying numbers until I get the answer. That's one way. But in this case, they want us to show our steps. So this is where solving the equation where you're getting X and isolating it to determine what X is. That's the solving equation, the steps part. I always tend to have three three quick steps. The first step really is to simplify both sides. So the first is to simplify both sides. What that in, that involves is uh, combining like terms, distributive property, uh, order of operations, those kind of things. To where you're down to um, nothing can be combined. It's simplified as much as possible, right? So over here, I look at six minus X minus three. I can do some simplifying because there's some terms I can combine. And because I, I use that word combine like terms, I tend to not use minuses. I'm not a big fan of minuses when I'm doing combining that subtraction symbol. So remember, subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite. So this is six minus X, but now I'm going to write it as six plus negative and it's a negative one X. I tend to also put the one in front of X at times just so that way I, I realize, oh, that's one X. And then minus three, so instead of minus three, it's plus negative three. So now combining like terms, I look and see I've got a six and a negative three. So those can combine. Now that I've got plus, I got addition in between all my terms, it's easier to commute or use the associative property to, um, add like terms. So six and negative three is a positive three. So I have a negative one X plus three. Okay. A positive three equals over here. I don't have any combining of like terms to do. I have four X minus 12. Those are not like terms, but I'm going to go ahead and just for the sake of keeping consistent, take that minus and write it as add the opposite plus a negative. So now I have this, this expression, negative X plus three, is equal to 4x plus negative 12. So I want I want my x's all on one side, and it looks like I de kind of determined to put x over here, so that means I got to get rid of it from over here. So the, an inverse operation, the inverse of 4x is negative 4x, right? A 4x and negative 4x, that causes that to cancel out. So I do the same thing over here, negative 4x. Oops, got two negatives there. Negative 4x. So I have a negative 1x and a negative 4x give me negative 5x. So I have negative 5x plus 3 is equal to what? All that's left over here is a negative 12. Now that I've got my uh, x's not, no longer on this side, I want to get rid of my number terms that are on this side, my constants. So I'm going to subtract. That's the next step is to subtract. So I should keep my running. My, se my second step was to um, isolate the X or variable terms, I'll say X terms in this case, because I'm dealing with X, the variable terms. And then the third is to isolate the constant. The constant is the just the numbers without variables, right? Isolate the constant. So I'm going to subtract as I was doing, subtract three from both sides. So I have this 
negative 5x is equal to negative 12 and negative 3 is negative 15. All right? And then my last step, my fourth step, is to uh, divide by the coefficient. Divide by the coefficient, right? So the coefficient of the of the x, right? That's the only that's that's the only coefficient that's left is this negative five. So I'm going to divide by negative five. Why? Because negative five divided by negative five is one x, and that's what I want is that one x. And so I divide both sides by negative five. So I have my answer here. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is positive 3. So x is equal to 3. And, and what, as I said in the beginning, how do I check to make sure I'm right? Right. What, I've, what I was looking for is does that 3 make this equation true? If I were to put in, in place of the x, a 3. So on one side, I have 6 minus 3 minus 3. And on the other side, I would have 4 times 3 minus 12. In place of that x, I'm putting the 3 that I just discovered I think x is. So let me check it. Is that true? Do I get? Is it a true statement now? 6 minus 3 minus 3. So 6 minus 3 minus 3 is 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. So it checks out. I do have a true statement. I get 0 on both sides. So yes, x does equal 3. There we go.